Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today's guest is Mohammed El Badwihi, and he's co-founder over at and COO over at Rasael. Mohammed, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Adam. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, Mohammed. So uh, I'm excited to talk about WhatsApp today and get into what you're doing over at Rasael and really how sales teams are are using this platform that you've developed to to get a, to get results for their teams and for their organizations. So excited to get into that. Um, but before we do, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with what we like to call our Mission Matters Minute. So, Mohammed, at Mission Matters, our aim and our goal is to amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's what we do. Mohammed, what mission matters to you? Uh, Thanks so much, Adam. Rasail's mission is to empower sales teams to succeed with WhatsApp, and specifically B2B software companies that sell to SMEs. In the majority of the world today, in LATAM, in parts of Africa, in Mm -hmm. Asia, India, Middle East, and so on, B2B software is sold over WhatsApp. In fact, pretty much everything is sold over WhatsApp. This Mm -hmm. is also happening in Europe, and the wave is beginning to hit the United States. Rasail is at the forefront of that wave, and that's our mission. Yeah. It's great. I love bringing mission-based individuals on the line to share, you know, why they do what they do, how they're doing it, and really what we can all learn so that we can all grow together. So great, great to have you on. And I guess just to, just to dive right in, like, like how'd you, your co-founder, how'd you come up with this business? Like, like, what was the idea? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll give you a bit of a background. I was born in, in Egypt and I lived in Southeast Asia for most of my life. Mm-hmm. Now in those countries and in, in a large majority of the world, really WhatsApp rules. If you don't exist on WhatsApp as a business, you don't yeah. exist as a company, period. So I got interested in this when my co-founder, you just mentioned, uh, mm-hmm. his name is Tarek, whom I've known for 15 years now since university. He came to me with this idea, with this opportunity. He said, hey, he was working in intercom at the time Mm -hmm. and he said i'm noticing that the way businesses talk to their customers is changing people no longer want to talk to you on the phone on your website on email they want to use whatsapp they want to use other social messaging Mm -hmm. apps i have no idea if this is going to work out but i've I've got a good hunch and i want you with me on this and so Mm. we took a shot he had started a couple for a couple of months on his own but he was right and the data (laughs) backed him up and it's true there there is no single channel in the world today that has this kind of usage this kind of penetration and this kind of growth yeah. there 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 are close to 3 billion active users on whatsapp mm-hmm. and businesses want to be where their customers are and customers yeah. more and more are driving the the conversation really they're deciding where they want to talk to businesses they'll mm-hmm. text you on whatsapp and if you're not there you're just you're just not there yeah. yeah. So and, that was how we got started. Mm-hmm. And I, I see that like in, in the U.S. there's so many and th- that that may be new news for many people that watch mm-hmm. this in the U.S. as well, because they don't they may not have used WhatsApp that much mm-hmm. in their in their business life, in their personal. Maybe m- m- many people may be having even don't even know what WhatsApp business is. So I find it interesting, but I just happen to have a lot of friends internationally that use it all the time. So for me, it's a part of my day to day life. And but I've never really considered mm-hmm. The next level of that, which is how do I incorporate it into the business? Because I'll give you like, for example, how does how does it work for Mission Matters? How does it work for what we do? So mm. as you kind of dug through and you're going through and you're looking at how you can add value to the business community, like what were some of the things that were missing that you were able to then help with? For businesses specifically and how they can run on what's mm-hmm. happening? Yep. Yeah. Well, let me give you a, a little bit of why WhatsApp is useful for individuals, at least mm-hmm. on the consumer, on the receiving side. It's clean. It's very clean. There's almost zero yeah. spam on WhatsApp. And then and I'll also try and tie it with what that means to businesses. That also means a high open rate. If I get a message on WhatsApp, it's because I either uh, opted in to receive it or it's yeah. something I care about. And if it's not, I can easily block it. So highly regulated businesses that misuse WhatsApp are immediately banned 
mm. uh, by meta and often permanently. And, and that's why it's so much better than SMS. SMS is wow. a free, free for all world, yeah. right? There's, there's no such thing as a business getting banned. Like you don't hear that. And mm. they'll just buy a new number in an instant and that's it. Uh, mm. WhatsApp is much more regulated than that. And if you're a WhatsApp user, you'll notice that the, the flow of messages coming to you uh, is very, very clean. Mm. And now it's that personal. you say that, by the way, yeah. I can attest to that. I never noticed yeah. that. You're right. I get a bunch yeah. of spam, like SMS messages from everything, including government that are running for office. And yeah. then, and then I'm like, I didn't sign up for all this. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, and I'm like, how did they, what's going on here? Probably because of my area code, right? So somehow yeah. they bought some lists and uh, every single buddy's got, right? So, but yeah. you're right. My WhatsApp is clean. Like, yeah, I don't get yeah, that exactly. <laughs> and and on that point, actually, I'll I'll tell you a story, but I won't mention who. There is a person running for office in the U.S. Mm. at the moment who used WhatsApp and decided to use WhatsApp for that same purpose to mm. treat it as SMS. But like I said, WhatsApp is heavily regulated. So within yeah. about a period of one month of them trying to overcome those regulations, they got banned permanently. <laughs> So, that's so there's definitely great. a right way and a wrong way to use yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. So, so continue. So, okay. So it's clean. So I got it from yep. that standpoint. I understand that yep. there's less SMS. So, so what else? So what else? Yep. How does this? So it's super personal and familiar to you as a WhatsApp user. There, mm. people who use WhatsApp use it every single day. They talk to their family, they talk to their yeah. friends. They use it to order groceries. They use it to get updates on their flight, and pretty much every other business transaction. So for businesses. It's a no-brainer for yeah. them to exist on platforms like this. Now, why would a business want to use, say, a platform like Resale instead of just the normal WhatsApp app? Mm -hmm. Now, businesses usually start that way. They'll get on the WhatsApp app. They'll talk to their customers. But at some point, your messaging volume increases. Your team mm -hmm. grows. You can no longer manage the conversations, the manage the leads, manage your deals, and then you suddenly realize that everything is stuck in one place on your phone. Mm. What a lot of people don't know is that WhatsApp actually comes in multiple flavors. There's a normal WhatsApp. There's also a WhatsApp business app, which is for yeah. micro businesses. If I'm a small business owner, I'll just use that. And then there's WhatsApp business platform. WhatsApp mm. business platform is what larger or medium-sized companies use, and there's no official app from Meta for that. And so mm -hmm. they partner with companies like Resale, like us, to provide mm -hmm. the tools and the interface and the platform for them. Mm -hmm. So the way they use Resale is for a couple of reasons. One is to manage their conversation volume and to collaborate with their team in one place. So mm -hmm. imagine one shared inbox where all of your WhatsApp conversations come in. Yeah. You're getting 100 conversations, 200 a day. They come into one place. They're routed to the right people. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two to integrate with CRMs. If you run a sales team, you know how important a CRM oh, yeah. is. Oh yeah, and tracking <laughs> and, and everything else that goes into that, yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So getting that data, getting that visibility, whether you're a salesperson or a sales manager or a mm -hmm. RevOps manager or whoever you are, you want that data because that exists today with email, right? Mm -hmm. And phone calls, all of these tools exist, not so much for WhatsApp. And so yeah. you need integrations. So that's what, Resale does and automation. Mm -hmm. When you're getting a thousand messages every single day or a thousand yeah. conversations on WhatsApp, you want a, some way to qualify those messages to automate responses to help your customers, mm -hmm. to help your sales team. And so building a chatbot is one of the ways that people use Resale today mm -hmm. to build, for example, a lead qualification chatbot over WhatsApp that will qualify your leads first and then direct them to the right person. You know, yeah. this person belongs to Adam, this person goes to Sarah and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's in a nutshell, some of the things that people can do with it. There's of course a lot more, but I don't want to make this too yeah. technical. Where, where do you think this can go in, in the U S like, like mm. the adoption and everything else? Like, where do you think this can go in the U S for, for WhatsApp and adoption overall? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And like I was saying earlier in a large part of the world, this is everywhere. Yeah. And it's a no brainer for people. But you're right. In the United States, in North America, in Canada, mm -hmm. where I'm based now, people don't really use WhatsApp for mm -hmm. uh, business yet. Not as much. 
and not in sort of the ubiquitous way that we see everywhere else. Mm -hmm. However, this this is slowly changing, mm -hmm. and it's for various reasons. I'll, I'll mention something in that the last investor or the shareholder earnings call mm -hmm. for Meta, Mark Zuckerberg mentioned that WhatsApp adoption is increasing in the United States and called 2024 the year of WhatsApp in yeah. the USA. Yeah. So, and we kind of were feeling this over the past year or so, and we were mm -hmm. seeing data that points to this, that more and more people are adopting it, but we were not sure because we're mm. not really in their seat. We don't know what's happening. Of course. Right? Yeah. And so there's a, there's a shift slowly towards more and more adoption of WhatsApp. About half of the United States use WhatsApp um, mm. every single day. About 80% use it weekly. It, these are staggering numbers. Business adoption, not as much yet, but you'll see WhatsApp being used for business among communities that are used to WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Hispanic communities in the United States mm -hmm. or businesses that serve, that have teams in the U.S. that sell to mm -hmm. Latin America, to Asia, to other parts of the world that use WhatsApp are adopting it. WhatsApp, mm -hmm. and so this is happening, and it's happening also very aggressively with the younger generation. Mm -hmm. More and more of them are just jumping on WhatsApp. It's so much easier. And it doesn't matter whether you're on Android or iPhone. There's yeah. no more the blue blue bubble, green bubble war yep, that happens. Yep, yep. Everything can you send is a file? Same. Can you not send a file? Is exactly. the text? Is the video? Oh, it's such a pain. Yeah. It's such a pain. And so WhatsApp yeah. just takes care of all of that. But for the third reason I is that- I never thought about that. that. It's uniting us. <laughs> <laughs> the app, it's when the, the Apple Android. and Android users of the world <laughs> unite. That's called WhatsApp. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I agree. And that's, it's so true. It's such a, such a little thing, but it's so true. Yeah. Uh, and finally, of course, Meta is aggressively marketing WhatsApp as a better mm. alternative to mm. iMessage and SMS. This is something that they really, really want because they know that the US is a massive, massive market. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's happening in the United States. And we already see businesses beginning to adopt mm. it in the US. If yeah. WhatsApp becomes, and like I mentioned, there's two point, about a year ago was 2.8 billion daily active users. This is not accounts that exist. These are people mm. actively using it every single day. That's almost half the yeah. planet. Yeah. That number is not going to stop. And so if, if that's happening and it's a wave that's hitting, hitting the entire world, mm. it's, there's only a matter of time before businesses everywhere also jump on that, the United States included. Yeah, make, makes a lot of sense. And I, I want to go a little bit, I want to kind of circle back to the to the product itself. And like, so you you have all these users and I know in, in any product, you know, it, it never starts where it's going to end, right? We always want to reiterate, we always want to make it better. So like, how has customer feedback shaped this side of the product and or the product mm. map, however we want to word that? Like, how, how has that happened? Yeah, that's, that's, that's really interesting, Adam. And then this is something that has been important to us from day one. When we started our sale, we had started our sale after running another business in the space mm -hmm. of business messaging called Octopods. And through Octopods, we also worked with WhatsApp long before WhatsApp released WhatsApp Business Platform. Mm -hmm. And we learned from customers. Uh, Octopods was a small integration for an existing platform. I won't talk about it too much, but it was yeah. an integration rather than a standalone platform like Rasail is. Mm, and we worked with thousands of customers that were relentless about the feedback they gave us. Hey mm. guys, this is great, but hey guys, this is what a blessing. Uh, That's amazing. You <laughs> yes. don't always get, not getting feedback is the hardest thing sometimes. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And so so through that we developed the I guess the opinion that we needed to start Rasail, a standalone product, and to start it from mm. the ground up and to realize and to understand that um, customer feedback is important from day one. So from the very mm. beginning, from our very first customers, we worked very closely with them in shaping what Rasail will look like, in understanding their workflows deeply, in understanding what works and what doesn't for them. We don't build for six months in the dark and then release to customers. We get people on board early on from yeah. the research to development to beta testing. And it could be that we release something. Uh, we usually release a simpler version of a feature. So we'll, mm -hmm. instead of building a version 1.0, we'll build a version 0.1 and then release that to customers. And they'll hammer us 
with feedback <laughs> and essays on why this is bad. They'll provide then... <laughs> wording here, Muhammad, not hammer. They'll provide. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, precisely. So they're <laughs> precisely. <laughs> they've been so kind to to offer us those insights, and yeah. it also tells us that they care about this problem and they care Absolutely. about yeah. what we're building, which is so so important to us. And and so we've been doing that from the very beginning. Some of them, you know, we jump on calls with them every week, or they're part of our Slack group. They talk to us. They're, wow. they're more than happy to share their their thoughts and insights. And mm. we learn from that a lot to the point where we can launch something and then end up scrapping it or redoing it entirely because it just didn't work for customers. Mm. Now, there's one specific particular customer that gives us the harshest feedback, and that's yeah. ourselves, because we... Yeah are a B2B software company. Mm -hmm. We are a company that sells on WhatsApp. We use the sale to sell the sale. So our customers yeah. talk to us on WhatsApp. So as soon as we launch something that doesn't work for our sales team, mm -hmm. our sales team is quick to let us know. Our own team is very, very, and we feel it too. If it's broken, yeah. it's broken. We're just not able to use it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's an advantage or I guess a privilege that we've had in that we use the sale every single day Mm -hmm. And any little part of it that doesn't work is felt and it's felt deeply and it hurts, mm -hmm. but it means that we have something that we can fix or change or work on. Yeah. Can you give a, a for those that have never envisioned until watching mm -hmm. maybe this, this episode and they're like, oh, okay, yeah. I played around with WhatsApp, but like, I don't get it. Like, how is this going to work for my business? Maybe can you give some examples mm -hmm. of how you've seen businesses use Rasaya? Yes. Yes, of course. There, there are a variety of ways, of course. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, one of the things that people want to do with WhatsApp mm -hmm. that they could not do on their normal WhatsApp is to integrate with their CRM yeah. or to automate or to build chatbots. But I'll give you maybe a picture of, yeah, maybe I'll do it this way. A customer journey. How do people actually mm -hmm. get to you? There are a few ways and there are touch points. Think of it like, I, I see WhatsApp as where email was, say, 10 or 15 years ago when it was mm -hmm. still sort of coming out. People were learning how to use it. Yeah. Now... I'll give you an example of our website. People look for something or, mm -hmm. and then come across our website. When, as they're browsing the landing page, there's a chat with us on WhatsApp button. Mm -hmm. So that's the first entry point. People will say, okay, I've got WhatsApp. I'm going to chat with you on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. They click on the WhatsApp button. If they're browsing on their mobile phone, it immediately opens the WhatsApp app. So that's mm -hmm. the first touch point. It's very quick. It immediately opens the WhatsApp app. They yeah. send us a message. All right. That's one way. Now, I'll take you through the whole thing, and then I'll talk about mm -hmm. a different way. They receive it. They send us a message. Now, it can go one of two ways. If we have data on this customer, we can immediately link them to the right place because we know who they are. We've already mm -hmm. got that within Rasail as this, this is an existing customer, or yeah. this is a partner, or this is so-and-so. If we don't, the way and we've the got data for that, real quick, just yeah. so that people that are newer to WhatsApp, maybe in the United yeah. States, you it's it's not easy to get a WhatsApp like account. You have to have an, a phone number. You have to sign up. It's not like a, you just sign up quickly and like a, a Gmail address. It's like it's hard to get and verify and to keep and maintain a WhatsApp. It has to be a there has to be a real person around that. So even Correct. just that phone number connecting to the CRM and otherwise, like that's a big deal. Like you know who that person is, and they're and Correct. it's going to be on a personal device typically. So it's going to be direct communication with the customer. Go ahead. I just wanted to give that distinction for people. That's correct. It's going to be direct communication with the customer. You're right. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very likely or most likely a real person. Yeah. And on the business side as well, this is important. Me as a business, and that's why people are more willing to trust me yeah. as a business, is that businesses require approval from Meta to be on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And so there is a verification process that happens to say, okay, you, and then Meta watches your messaging quality. If you start mm -hmm. getting spammy, your quality rating drops, you'll be yeah. blocked from messaging, you'll get banned and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's also uh, another point on, on that trust yeah. relationship. So they send us that message. Let's say it's a brand new person. I don't know who they are. I've just got okay. their phone number. And by the way, it's, it's still very private. And I know there are concerns about privacy and WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. All that we get as a business from when you send us a message is your phone number and your nickname, nothing else. Meta does yep. not connect it to your Facebook, does not give us that information. Mm -hmm. They don't do that because they know as soon as they do that, people are going to leave WhatsApp. They don't want to have anything to do with it. Yep. So it's super private. We only get your number and we get your nickname. 
Yep. Then the way we have it set up on Resale, if you message us on Resale, is a chatbot will talk to you. That'll say, mm -hmm. hey, what can I help you with? What do you want? Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk to sales? Are you curious about Resale? Yeah. Are you reporting a bug? Are you an existing customer? Are you a partner? And so on. And then you pick one of those options. And here's here's an interesting thing about WhatsApp for business is that people don't have to type. They get buttons mm -hmm. that they can choose on WhatsApp. Yeah. That's another yeah. advantage. So they can click on those buttons, submit whatever information you ask of them. Yeah. And as part of the chatbot could be an AI bot. Mm -hmm. If they're just asking some questions that the AI can answer, it'll answer them. If not, it'll say, sorry, I can't help you. I'm going to direct you to the right person. It'll mm -hmm. direct them to the right person. So let's say it directs them to me, Muhammad. Mm -hmm. I have Rasel installed on my phone. I'll get a ping. It'll say, hey, you've got a new conversation. I can yeah. immediately open that up. I start talking to the customer and I've got the full WhatsApp messaging experience. I've got mm. voice chats, I've got media, I've got photos, videos, yeah, um, everything I I have there on my phone and also on the mm -hmm. Resale web app. But I've also got now all the other tools that I'm using to communicate with this person or to manage this lead or mm. potential deal, which yeah. is my CRM integration. So if that phone number exists in my CRM, it's going to automatically match it and mm -hmm. I'll see who that is. If it doesn't, it'll create one in the CRM mm -hmm. and it will log all of our chats and so on. And so yeah. that's how it starts, but you can imagine the rest of the uh, conversation and how it goes. Yeah. Now, it's also not limited to me. I can tag my teammate in that mm. conversation with Adam privately and say, hey, I need help with this customer and mm -hmm. my teammate will come. So it's also very collaborative. Yeah. Yeah. And so, what becomes interesting here too is if you think about the trust with the customer, mm -hmm. like for them to like most people aren't because they feel differently when they when they're interacting on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. So that's usually a lot, especially a lot of them are going to be doing a lot of they're 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 living within that ecosystem, but it's different than email. Like they're yep. going to have a different conversation. They're going to have the, it's because it's different. They may have just been talking to their, you know, their wife, their husband, their kid, exactly. or somebody else messaging. And then now you're in that same feed. So if yep. your business is in that same feed, so to speak, as their day-to-day -day life and what they're doing, then the affinity they have for your brand, in my opinion, just becomes that much closer. It's like, oh, Absolutely. I'm talking to Mission Matters Oh, at, right after on the same app in the same place responding to an inquiry that they just talked to their wife or their kid, picking up their kid from soccer practice or whatever else. So now you become part of their lives. So it's, it's different than just, I want, I want people to understand like the, the complexity of this, like it's so much different than just like an email or something it's else like that. Absolutely. Even for just organization, like the, the psychology behind it's different. That's true. That's so true, Adam. And it's so personal and so yeah. intimate. And obviously you, as a business, you also want to be mindful of that, that this is a personal mm -hmm. space that you're yep. talking to your customers on. Hence and no best... spamming, right? Like exactly. not saying people should be doing that anyway, but that's why Meta <laughs> would be so quick to get rid of a business that didn't, right? <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yep. And and this is also why, and this maybe leads me to mm -hmm. the second point of how people can, people use this is through what's called campaigns. Mm -hmm. If a customer, so the one way is the customer will come to your website or find you somewhere else or scan a QR code or something like that, and they'll yeah, message you. Yeah. The other way is you send a campaign. It's kind of like a marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you want to be mindful of who you're talking to. Have you interacted with them before? Have yeah. they gone to your website or something like that? Or maybe this is just going to be something that is a potential fit for them. And Meta mm -hmm. also is very strict about limiting the reach of these campaigns. But yep. let's say you run a campaign on a particular list of phone numbers that you've mm -hmm. gathered by them coming to your website or signing up for something or you interacted with them somewhere. Mm -hmm. That gets delivered on their phone and the campaign could be a video with a message with some buttons. Obviously, yeah. best practices to allow them to opt out immediately. Mm -hmm. But that's the other way. They interact with that campaign Mm -hmm. on their phone. So you are the one initiating the conversation. It could also be a personal campaign. So let's yep. say I'm a salesperson, I'm reaching out to a few accounts. This is my choice of how I want to reach out to the persons on WhatsApp. Hey, my name is Mohammed. I'm from Rasail. Yeah. You know, I want to chat with you, but so it's kind of like how you do it on LinkedIn, say. Mm -hmm. So that's the other way. And the, the thing about WhatsApp, because of this trust and because of this nature of how personal it is, mm -hmm. the open rates are insane. The yeah. open rates are like 90 plus percent. 
Mm-hmm. Obviously, again, you want to be mindful of the fact that this is a personal space for people, so no spam. And yeah. best practice is to allow them to opt out immediately if they think this is not a fit for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but that's a, a huge advantage over email and SMS, where the open rates can sometimes be sub 1% mm-hmm. uh, for for messaging. So that's the other yeah. way uh, that people can can initiate or interact with businesses on WhatsApp. Yeah. Well, Mohammed, I have to say, you know, this is, you've got me excited about WhatsApp again, and that hasn't happened in a while. So it's been great having you on the show. I guess I'll just ask, I mean, what's next? What's next for you? What's next for Rasael? Quite a lot, to be honest, but I'll maybe just a l- share a little bit. Like I mentioned, we're focused on B2B software companies. Yeah. And this segment of businesses has such a high bar for product quality. And that's something that we are proud of in in Rasael. Mm-hmm. And for this segment in particular, we're inventing the way that they sell online, mm-hmm. that they sell their software online, and specifically to SMEs, because this is a segment that we see has not been served very well in this space, mm-hmm. and especially in the emerging markets for WhatsApp, like Europe and the United States. Mm-hmm. There is no method today, no manual, and no one that's focused on this. And so Rasail is building that method, and we'll have a book launched on it um, soon. We've got also a lot planned on the product side, uh, more CRM integrations, more specific Mm. workflow features, sales automation and things like that, that we have. So people can find out more about that perhaps later when I share some links. And yeah, I think I'll stop there. There's also some stuff on AI and how it works with WhatsApp. That Come on, gonna, man. Uh, this is good. Gonna... This is good. Well, I, well, hey, I know one thing for certain. There's people watching that are going to want to follow up. And, I, and hey, when this book comes out, you got to let me know. Don't be a stranger, all right? I, I want to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. I'll do, I'll I'll do our best. What, yeah, we, we are going to try our best to. Is it this year, next year? Yeah, whenever this year somebody sure. says. This year okay, sure. okay. Whenever somebody <laughs> says, I like, to put, I like to put them on the hook on that one. I'm like, it's, it's, now it's in. I'm, everybody this heard. This is actually the first time I'm mentioning it publicly so i want to commit also um, that's what we do <laughs> oh um, i like your work i like your work better you like to commit versus i'm putting you on the hook for that putting book. myself <laughs> on the line yes <laughs> um yes. how do people how do people follow up how do they connect how do they continue the conversation you mentioned ai you mentioned other things other developments yeah. i'm sure there's others that are going to want to follow up and connect how do they do that Sure. We are most active on LinkedIn and mm-hmm. on our website, our blog. So we've got our LinkedIn, Rasail. Rasail, like, I suppose we'll share links or... Yeah, and we'll, and we'll, yeah, put, and we'll, put, all, yeah. we'll put all so that Rasail in, the, in, the, in the show notes for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then myself, Mohamed El Badwihi, on LinkedIn as well. Mm-hmm. Our website is rasail.io. We have a learning center call at, at learn.rasail.io. That's where all of our blog posts are. So I think those are the best ways people can uh, find us and follow us. Perfect. And uh, for everybody watching, we'll, we'll put all those links in the show notes, as I mentioned, so that you can just click on them and head right on over. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters, this is a daily show. Each and every day, we're bringing you new entrepreneurs, new thought leaders, new visionaries, and we don't want you to miss a thing. So definitely hit that subscribe button so that you get the notifications and uh, you can tune in. And uh, Mohammed, again, thank you so much for coming on. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Adam. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. So much fun and um, so much laughter. I appreciate it.